All right, so we're going to figure out how to find the acceleration of our uh, system with uh, the cart and the pulley and the hanging mass. Uh, and uh, this will both be an example of how we can do some problem solving and give you a chance to practice doing some of the problem solving in a more structured way before uh, you start having to do it you know, independently for the problem set. Um, and then also once we uh, get through uh, solving the problem one way, um, I'll also show you a second way uh, to think about the problem uh, that gives us an alternate problem solving approach which will give us uh, the same answer in the end. Uh, and so this is the uh, cart and the hanging mass system. Uh, and so uh, just sort of the general setup uh, is that we're going to have our table. Uh, we've got our little pulley set up. Uh, we'll have our cart here. Uh, and we were able to, you know, add masses to that as as we needed to depend, um, or we, we can add mass to it, so we can change its mass to be whatever we want. Uh, that is then going to be connected by a string, which is going to go to uh, a little hook uh, that uh, can contain as much mass as we want. The hook itself has some mass, and then we can add uh, some more mass to this as well. Uh, and of course, uh, if we let go of it, um, we're going to treat this cart as though it is frictionless, uh, and it is it is very close to frictionless. Um, that's what the lab equipment is, is designed to do, to approximate a frictionless situation. Uh, the pulley is uh, super lightweight and also basically frictionless. And uh, that means that as this hook falls, um, it should be able to pull the cart forward without really uh, any forces resisting it. Uh, and so there should be a way to figure out, uh, based on how much mass uh, we have on the hook and how much mass we have on the cart, uh, what the acceleration of the cart is going to be. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully this should make sense. Uh, the, the more mass that is on the cart um, and the less mass that is on the hook, the slower it's going to go. Uh, and so when we get our final relationship, we should be able to just sort of look at it uh, and look at sort of the extreme examples, like what if all the mass was on the hook, what if all the mass was on the cart, uh, and see if it, if it behaves the way that we expect. Um, some assumptions that we are going to make. Uh, we are going to assume there is no friction or air resistance. Uh, which of course, you know, is not is not perfectly true, um, but should be very very uh, close to true, uh, and and we should still be able to get good results uh, even not accounting for these. And like air resistance especially is is extraordinarily difficult to account for, and it's not worth the effort unless it's going to have a significant impact on what's going on. Uh, we are also going to assume uh, that the string connecting the two objects is massless. Uh, and that again is a reasonable assumption. Um, the, you know, each one of these objects is going to have a uh, mass in the hundreds of grams, and the string is maybe a gram, maybe maybe two grams. Like it's it's just not going to have a measurable impact. Um, but if if we had like a super heavyweight chain uh, connecting them, uh, that would actually complicate things a bit because the more of like a heavy chain that is hanging off the end, that is effectively adding more mass that is hanging, you know, off the end of the pulley. Uh, that's going to behave sort of like we were adding mass to this hanging mass, and so as as it goes through, uh, the acceleration uh, would change. Uh, but if we assume the, the string is massless, we don't need to worry about how much string is on which side of the pulley, and that's going to simplify things uh, a little bit for us. All right, so uh, to do this, uh, the first thing we're going to do, oh, oh, sorry, and then uh, our goal. Um, we want to find uh, an expression uh, for uh, the acceleration of the cart. So how quickly the cart's going to accelerate when we let everything go. Um, and we want it to be in terms 
of the sorts of stuff that we would be able to easily measure or determine in most setups. And the truth is the only things that we can easily determine are the mass of each one of these. Uh, so I want to find an expression for the acceleration of the cart uh, in terms of uh, the masses of the cart and the hanging mass. Uh, and there's really nothing else that we're going to be able to super easily measure in a lot of situations. And so uh, those those are going to be sort of the, the two things uh, that we would plug in as variables to our equation. All right, so let's think about how we do this. First thing we're going to do is we're going to draw uh, some free body diagrams. And we're going to simplify, rather than having this sort of more complicated picture, uh, we'll just uh, draw a simplified view of it for our free body diagrams. So... One of the things that we pretty much always do when we're doing any sort of forces problem solving is we're going to have to draw a free body diagram. And so we'll just simplify our cart as one block and our little hanging uh, mass as another block. Um, and I'm going to put a dot here for the cart and a dot here for the hanging mass. Uh, and we want to we want to set up our free body diagrams uh, sort of like we we would have for the elevator. Uh, we'd want to draw all the individual forces, make sure that um, you know if one force is, is bigger or smaller in a particular direction, um, that, that you know we have that arrow drawn drawn larger on our diagram. Uh, and so what I would like you to do is. Uh, Pause the video and add arrows uh, to the dots and label them with what forces they are. Try to just complete the free body diagrams and, and label what forces we're talking about. And then unpause the video when you are ready. Okay, uh, so uh, both of these should have gravity pulling down on them. And so we can draw downwards arrow for uh, gravity. Label that FG. Um, and there should be a normal force uh, on this one because it's sitting on top of the table. Uh, and so the table is going to be pushing up on it, preventing it from falling downwards. Uh, we know it's not going to accelerate downwards, so the normal force must be equal to the force of gravity. Um, and actually, we should we should deal with the fact that the two forces of gravity might not be the same because the force of gravity is the the mass tie of the the object times g, uh, and so let's call this the force of gravity for the cart FGC, and this will be the force of gravity for the hanging mass FGH. All right, um, let's finish with the cart. Uh, so I said there's not going to be any friction and so or air resistance. So we don't need to worry about any forces uh, pulling backwards on it, trying to stop it from moving forward. Uh, but it's attached to this string, uh, and a string should exert a tension force. Uh, and so there should be a force of tension going forwards. Uh, and then... Uh, that should be it for this one. And then for the uh, little uh, block here, um, there should be, um, it's attached to the strings. So there should be some tension pulling it upwards, but it's not like on the ground or anything. So there's no normal force here. Um, and if we think about how big that tension force needs to be, uh, let's think about what direction this needs to accelerate. So for the, for the cart, uh, we know the net force needs to be uh, to the right, because when we let it go, it's going to accelerate to the right, and so our net force on our cart needs to be to the right. So the net force for the cart. Uh, for the block, we know it's going to accelerate downwards when we let it go, so the net force must be downwards. So our hanging mass, its net force is downwards, uh, which means if there is a tension force from the string pulling back up, it is not pulling as hard as the force of gravity. Um, but there does definitely need to be some sort of tension force because this is not going to fall as quickly uh, as if um, 
as, as if there was no string attached to it, right? And so the, the rope is definitely, or the string is doing something. It's slowing it down. It's making it not just go into free fall, um, but it's not canceling out the force of gravity, and that's why uh, this accelerates down, because there's still a little bit left uh, after whatever the tension can cancel. Um, yeah. And then the one other thing uh, you might notice is that, uh, so we've got like the hanging mass in the cart, the hanging mass and the cart. This one's equal to FGC. Um, do the tensions need to be different? Do we need the force of tension on the hanging mass uh, and the force of tension on the cart? Do we need to label those separately? Uh, and the answer is no. The tension, the rope, uh, remember uh, we talked about that the tension on the rope is, is constant everywhere uh, along it. Uh, and this is because of Newton's third law. Uh, all the string is doing is, is allowing us to sort of like redirect and extend our forces. Uh, and so this string is allowing the cart to pull up on the block and is allowing the block to pull the cart forward. Uh, and that's just Newton's third law. However hard the cart is pulling on the block has to match how hard the block is pulling on the cart. And so these two tension forces are actually going to be the same, um, which is also going to be really helpful for our problem solving. Okay. Um, so hopefully you came up with something like this, uh, at least the individual forces, um, and you uh, may or may not have drawn the net forces off to the side, but that is often something that uh, is, is going to be useful to do. Uh, and so if you didn't do that, that should be something you just get in the habit of sort of automatically doing, including the net force off to the side. Uh, the next step, we've talked about writing expressions for the net force, uh, ways to actually calculate uh, the net force. Uh, and so we should be able to uh, write some expressions for our net forces uh, in terms of things that we know. Um, oh, and I'm sorry, the other two things that we uh, know that we should probably include. We said we want to find an uh, expression for the acceleration of the cart in terms of the masses of the cart and the hanging mass. So in addition to having... All these forces we can talk about we also uh, we will have uh, the mass of this is going to be uh, MC uh, and the mass of this is going to be MH all right so uh, go ahead and think about how uh, can we uh, find uh, the net force on the cart uh, and how can we find the net force on the hanging mass and go ahead and write down uh, any expressions you can think of uh, using uh, variables that we have. And then unpause the video uh, when you pause the video, then unpause the video when you're ready to go over the answer. Okay. So, uh, the, there are always two ways that we can write the net force. One is as a combination of the individual forces we see on our free body diagram. Uh, the other one uh, is in terms of Newton's second law. So the net force on the cart, um, in terms of the individual forces, the normal force and the force of gravity cancel each other out. And so if we add all these up, the only thing left is the force of tension. Uh, and so the net force on the cart is equal to the force of tension. Um, it is also equal to uh, the mass times the acceleration. Uh, so it'll be equal to the mass of the cart times the acceleration of the cart. Uh, and then for the hanging mass, uh, we can do it again in terms of the individual forces. Here, the forces are not going to cancel each other out. The tension is going to cancel out uh, part of, but not all of the force of gravity. Uh, and so the net force uh, on H is going to be equal to, or the magnitude of this is going to be equal to FGH minus FT. Uh, and we can also write for Newton's second law. Uh, it'll be equal to uh, the hanging mass uh, times the acceleration of the hanging mass. All right, uh, and so this is, this is good. Uh, this is getting to be promising. Um, we have the uh, accelerations uh, here of the cart and the hanging mass. Um, we have them connected to the mass and also to some other stuff. Uh, and, so, and so we would uh, eventually like to just solve for what the acceleration of uh, the cart is. And one thing you might have realized is because they're attached by a string, 
Uh, however quickly like this one is moving, the hanging mass is falling, the cart has to move forward at the exact same rate because if they don't move, if like if the hanging mass moves faster than the cart, the string will break. And if the cart moves faster than the hanging mass, the string would go slack and the hanging mass wouldn't actually be pulling the cart forward. Uh, and so uh, the acceleration of the cart and the acceleration of the hanging mass, uh, these are both the same. Uh, and so we can just call that A. Uh, and so what I would like you to do uh, is see if you can find a way uh, to using uh, everything you know uh, to find an expression for A. Uh, and your answer should only be in terms of uh, in terms of uh, MC, the mass of the cart, MH, uh, and then also you can use you know, uh, constants and, and, and uh, numbers and stuff like that, but there shouldn't be any other variables. Um, so uh, this is this is sort of the the big problem solving bit, and so this uh, this will probably take a little bit. Uh, but go ahead and pause the video and see if you can come up with an expression for the acceleration. Uh, unpause either when you're done or you have uh, really tried and sort of exhausted all your op options and are uh, and are completely stuck. So go ahead and unpause when you're ready. Okay, so. We have uh, an issue here uh, where we have the, so the mass and the mass, that's fine. Um, we have the accelerations. Uh, we have the force of tension, uh, which is not a number that we are allowed to use. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, can we just stick a scale in the string? We said uh, in one of our previous lessons that we could just put a scale uh, in the string um, or break the string and you know, tie a scale into there and use that to measure the force of tension. Uh, the problem is in practice, uh, especially like if the scale is like flying, you know, across the lab, it's difficult to actually read it. Um, the scale needs to stabilize and it also introduces extra mass to the system. And so that's, that's just not going to be a practical option. We're not going to have any way to measure this force of tension. So we need to somehow get rid of this. Uh, we also uh, need to somehow uh, get rid of uh, FGH because uh, that is also uh, not one of the things we're allowed to use. So we need to find a way to get rid of that. Um, and so if that, uh, if that or if anything else I ever say at any point gives you any hints to help you get unstuck, uh, to whatever point you got to, um, always pause the video and try to like refix your solution and unpause and keep watching the solution. So I'm not going to keep reminding you of that, but like every time I do something or if I do another step, you realize, oh, I see how to solve the problem now you should go ahead and pause the video and do that and then come back and continue watching the solution. All right, I'm going to uh, collect sort of my uh, information maybe on a second page here uh, where it's going to be a little easier to show everything. Um, so we know that the force of tension is equal to the mass of the cart times, uh, we'll just call it the acceleration, uh, and that is also equal to FGH minus... Ft uh, equals mh times a. Uh, and so we have a problem here. Uh, we have two unknowns that are not acceptable. Uh, so we could like rearrange either one of these uh, to get an equation, an expression for the acceleration. Uh, but it would either be in terms of Ft or Ft and Fgh, neither of which is okay. Um, one way we can deal with at least the force of tension, though, uh, is just with a simple substitution. Uh, we could uh, take the fact that we know the force of tension is equal to uh, the mass of the cart times the acceleration uh, and plug that into here, right? Uh, and at least get the tension eliminated from that lower equation. So the force of gravity on H uh, minus mass of the cart times A. Uh, is equal to the hanging mass times the acceleration. Um, and so this is a little better, um, but we still have uh, FGH, and so we need a way to eliminate that. 
Uh, and of course, the way we can do that is we know the force of gravity is always equal to the mass times g. So here we're going to use the hanging mass times g. Uh, we don't need this one, but it would have been the mass of the cart uh, times g. And so uh, this is going to be the mass of the, sorry, the hanging mass uh, times g uh, minus the mass of the cart times a uh, equals the hanging mass times a. Uh, and now uh, we should be able to go ahead and uh, solve for the acceleration by rearranging this. Uh, and so uh, we'll get the, uh, the acceleration terms together. So we'll have mh times g uh, equals mh times a plus mc times a. I'll factor my a out. So the hanging mass times g is equal to the acceleration times the hanging mass plus the mass of the cart. Uh, and so now we can solve this for the acceleration, uh, and we get acceleration is equal to uh, the hanging mass times g uh, divided by mh plus mc. And we should check this and see if this seems reasonable. Um, anytime you get an expression, a more complicated expression like this that you have derived for a particular situation, before you assume it's right and just start plugging numbers into it, you should, you should stop and ask yourself, does this actually make sense? And uh, two of the most sort of useful points for checking an expression and seeing if it seems reasonable uh, are looking at the, like, the most extreme limiting cases, like what if you set something equal to like zero or infinity or something like that? What are the extreme cases going to be? Uh, and so the most obvious uh, example of an extreme would be if the mass of the cart was zero, if there, if there was no cart and we just had the hanging mass. Uh, in that case, it's not tied to anything, uh, and so we would expect this to just uh, fall uh, like any other dropped object and should have an acceleration of uh, g uh, because... That's how fast just a dropped object that's not tied to anything would accelerate. And so let's check what happens if we set the mass of the cart equal to zero. Uh, so if the mass of the cart was zero, we would get the hanging mass times g divided by the hanging mass plus zero. So we'd have the hanging mass times g divided by the hanging mass. Hanging masses would cancel out, and we get the acceleration is g. So that checks out. Um, let's check it again. Uh, what if what if we flipped it the other way? What if instead of this being zero, what if there, the hanging mass uh, had a mass of zero? So if there was nothing hanging off the end? Well, in that case, we just have our cart sitting on the table and it wouldn't be connected to anything and so nothing would be pulling it forward. So we'd expect the acceleration to be zero. Uh, so let's check that. Uh, if the hanging mass was zero, uh, the numerator would become zero, and then we'd still have, uh, our cart would have some mass, we'd have a denominator, so we'd have zero over something would give us an acceleration of zero, uh, and so that checks out. Um, so this, this seems like this is going to be a, a reasonable answer. All right, now, uh, the way that we got this by uh, writing all of our expressions in terms of the tension uh, and then factoring the tension out, that works, um, and, and it's fine, uh, and it's something you, you need to be able to do, and sometimes you're going to have to be able to do. Um, however, there is, in this particular case, there is another way to arrive at this expression uh, that is also a useful technique. Uh, and so I'd like to show you sort of an alternate approach for how do we, how do we take this uh, and figure out uh, what, is, what is going on. So I'm going to redraw my diagram um, quickly. C is MH. FGH, which we know was the hanging mass times G. We've got our force of tension. Uh, and then we've got our force of tension. Uh, 
our force of gravity on the cart and our normal force. Okay. What if, uh, what if instead of treating this as two different objects, we just treated it as a single object? And that might sound sort of weird, but this is actually something we do all the time. Uh, for example, like the cart uh, is made up of several pieces. It's got like a bunch of wheels and axles, and then we uh, could add little masses to it, or we could hang little masses on the hook, and we, we were okay combining those into single objects. Um, if we talk about like, um, you know, pushing, pushing any object, uh, it's going to be made of, you know, little, several different, you know, molecules and atoms. They're all connected to each other. And we combine all of those together to be a single object. And so, and so we actually, all the time, we combine smaller pieces together, uh, to treat them as a big object. Uh, the sort of term for what we do, uh, when we're taking, uh, what feels more like sort of separate objects, though, and treating them uh, like a single object is we're going to call them a single system. And so we're going to treat uh, both objects as a single system. Uh, in that case, uh, the net force on a system uh, is just equal to the sum of all the external forces on the system. Um, we don't worry about forces internal to the system um, because they're always going to cancel each other out. Um, so here we have an internal force, the tension, where the uh, cart is pulling on the block, the block is pulling back on the cart, and from the perspective of the cart and the block, those cancel each other out and don't have any effect on the system's motion. Uh, just like if you, uh, tr like, say you decided you really wanted to fly. Uh, and so you were going to try to pick yourself up and see if you could like uh, carry yourself through space. And maybe if you if you were strong enough, you could just lift yourself up and you could uh, you know fly around that way. And so if you if you grab onto your foot uh, and lift up as hard as you can, uh, you might move your foot around, um, but you're not going to be able to lift your entire body off the ground because uh, you're going to pull up on your foot. Your foot's going to pull back down on you. And although like your foot and your hand might move around a little in the context that you and your foot and your hand are all part of the same system of your body, um, you're not, ex there's no, there's ultimately like no net force on the system. And so uh, you, you can never... You can never have a force inside of a system cause the system as a whole to move. Uh, like if your car gets stuck in the ditch, uh, another example, you can't uh, just angrily from like inside sitting at the steering wheel uh, push forward on the steering wheel really hard and push your car out of the ditch. Uh, you have to separate yourself from the system, get out of the car, go stand behind it. Now you and the car are separate, and now you could push forward uh, and get the car to move. Uh, so we're going to treat both objects as a single system, um, and we want to find uh, uh, want to find uh, the F net for the system, uh, which is just the sum of the external forces. So not tension in this case. Uh, and that's, uh, that's, that's like nothing new. That's something we've always done. So like we defined our objects uh, as the two things and we, you know, we wrote our individual forces and then we wrote our net forces and so we're just doing the exact same thing. We're just finding the net force. Um, what's a little weird is the directionality thing. Uh, and so... Um, like here, the forces are up and down, and then this one is down, but it's, it's doing something different because the, the system got bent around a pulley, right? And so, uh, you know, relative to our direction of motion, the system is going to be traveling like this, sort of in this, this uh, right angle pattern. And so the force of gravity here is forward from the system's perspective 
right? Because it's pulling in the direction that's going to make the system go forward. Uh, but here the normal force and FGC are just up and down. And so uh, the way that you combine the forces, you just need to keep that in mind uh, in terms of how, how those are going to impact each other. Like we would never have this normal force getting canceled out by this force of gravity because they're doing very different things. This one is pushing up like perpendicular to the direction the system is moving, whereas this one is pulling in the direction the system is moving. Um, that said, for this particular system, uh, it's not super complicated. These two already cancel each other out, and so the only force left on the system just is the force of gravity uh, on the hanging mass. Uh, and so the net force on our system uh, is equal to uh, the hanging mass, uh, the force of gravity on the hanging mass, because uh, that's the only thing left that hasn't gotten canceled, uh, which we know is equal to um, the mass of the system times the acceleration of the system. And that's, again, using the way that we can always write the net force either as a combination of individual forces or in terms of Newton's second law. Uh, and so let's think about what is true uh, if, if we have this. So the net force on the system is FGH. We know the way we find the force of gravity on the hanging mass is that is equal to the hanging mass times G. Uh, and the mass of the system is just the mass of everything in the system, uh, which is uh, the mass of the cart uh, plus the hanging mass. So the the cart plus the hanging mass times the acceleration. Uh, and so uh, if we have that expression, uh, we can just solve this for the acceleration. So the acceleration is going to be equal to hanging mass times G uh, divided by MC plus MH. Uh, which you'll notice is the exact same thing that we already got, right? That's exact. The only difference is I guess I added MC and MH in the opposite order, but that doesn't change anything. This is the same expression. It's a different way to get there, um, but it took significantly less work. Um, so it required a little bit of mental gymnastics to recognize this was a system. Um, but like all of this was just definitions because we'd never used a system before. Like if you're used to working with systems, you don't need to think about any of this. Once you recognize it's a system, you just go, oh, well, the net force on the system is, is the force of gravity on the hanging mass times the mass that equals the mass of the system times A. Uh, and so you can then just in, in two quick steps get to your acceleration expression. Whereas you'll remember we had to do like all of this math before when we were dealing with uh, the tension, dealing with them as separate objects. And so the system approach, when you are able to use it, is a, is a significantly faster approach. Um, but it can be a little trickier to see how things are. And so, and so both, both approaches work. Both of them are fine. And if you have time to do both, uh, they should always give you the same answer. And that can be a nice way to sort of check and make sure everything works. Um, and then just one last thing uh, to make sure we're clear on what we really did here. Um, so remember, uh, the net force on the system uh, is equal to the mass of the system times the acceleration. Uh, and so that's exactly what this is telling us. This is just a rearranged version of Newton's second law. The other reason we can tell that this expression makes sense is because uh, all we're doing is this here is the net force on the system. Uh, and this is the mass of the system. Uh, and that's just the second law. Acceleration is the net force divided by the mass, which is one of the ways that we can write uh, Newton's second law. Uh, and so the expression we came up with originally with all the tensions was just a restatement of Newton's second law. Uh, treating everything as a single system.